Does God draw all men to be saved? The chosen Charlies often point to John chapter 6, where Jesus said, No man can come to me, this is the context of eternal life, except the Father which has sent me draw him. So, as I said, the context of that verse is eternal life. That's what Jesus is talking about. And the chosen Charlie say that only the elect are drawn for salvation. And they say that draw is a forceful kind of an action. The free will Freddies negate this whole idea by citing John 12, where Jesus says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so then they will say that God draws all men unto him, and therefore anybody can come to Jesus. Now, personally, I think that's just quoting that verse in John 12 to redefine John 6, which is somewhat erroneous, because other than the word draw, those two verses don't really have any direct relation. In John chapter 6, it's the Father who is drawing men unto Jesus, specifically for the purpose of everlasting life, that Jesus shall raise them up at the last day. Whereas in John 12, Jesus the Son is drawing all men to himself, and it's not directly evident that that results in everlasting life. Chosen Charlie's interprets all men to mean all believers, but I think that's conjectural. Jesus was talking to unsaved people in that dialogue, so I think all men is a poor choice of words for that group of people that only referred to the elect. There. So, unlike the chosen Charlies, I probably wouldn't use John 6 to talk about predestination election because I don't think that's the key purpose of the passage personally. That topic is something that Paul typically explains to the saved rather than the unsaved. But that being said, the chosen Charlies could still argue that Jesus is still dealing with the subject. Perhaps he's just using simpler language, which you could say he does in John. He uses simpler language than Romans, even though they're often talking about some of the same things. So you could say that both are dealing with salvation. John just uses simpler language than Romans does because Romans is directly addressed to the saints, whereas John 6, the dialogue, isn't addressed to save the saints necessarily. John 6 is one of the most important chapters in the Bible when dealing with the issue of eternal versus conditional security and how we answer the people who fall away and abandon Jesus. And it's for that very reason that Jesus said later in the chapter, no man can come to me except it were given of him by my father, or of my father. So, comparing verse 65 with verse 44, we can see that the Father drawing somebody onto Jesus is the same as saying that the Father gives it that he can come to Jesus in the context of eternal life. So, for a person to come to Jesus for eternal life, that's the transaction that must happen. The Father must draw him. However, between verses 44 and 65, there are quite a few disciples that had been with Jesus. They had been disciples. They had been uh, following Jesus in, in some aspect. But then they completely failed to understand his teaching on eating the bread and drinking the blood. So they stumbled at his teaching, and it says that they, they walked no more with him. And John records that there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who we were that believed not, and who should betray him. So we see that besides Judas, there were other disciples who would betray him, if you want to use that sort of phrase, but in a different way, of course. And Jesus categorised them as believe not, which he knew from the beginning. So in a manner of speaking, they were his disciples, they followed some of his teaching, but the Father never drew them to Jesus. That transaction never took place. Now, it doesn't explain why that never took place or what the problem was, other than that they didn't believe that. That's all it really tells us, that we can relate to the reason why. But in any case, because the Father never drew them, they couldn't come onto Jesus for eternal life. They could only handle some of his teachings. But then they stumbled upon one of the most basic things, really. 
And it, it, you know, unlike the Calvinist narrative that they often pitch, it doesn't say that they were so totally depraved or they were just too saturated with years of Catholic teaching that they couldn't understand the passage. They just didn't understand the meaning of eating the bread and drinking the blood. On the other hand, we don't know whether the ele the remaining 11 disciples, if I exclude Judas, the remaining 11 disciples, we, we don't know if they fully understood or grasped what Jesus was talking about in that chapter either. We don't know if they fully understood eating the bread and drinking and so on. But even if they didn't understand it, Peter said, to who shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and we believe and are sure that you are the Christ and so on. And that's very similar to what he said when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am in the Synoptic Gospels? And Jesus said back to him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed it to you. And so cross-referencing cross that similar dialogue, we can maybe infer that the Father drawing someone to Jesus is possibly the Father revealing something to them, revealing to them that Jesus is the Christ. Because again, as I've pointed out before, the message of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. So somehow God needs to open somebody's spiritual eyes to show them that it's not foolish. It can't be revealed by flesh and blood. It has to be revealed by the Father in heaven. He has to draw them in. And so in much the, the same way, the message of eating his bread and drinking his blood was foolishness to many of those disciples in John 6. They couldn't accept the same. As for his 11 faithful disciples, um, there, there were multiple occasions where they didn't necessarily grasp what Jesus was saying or talking about. And Jesus even rebuked them for their misunderstanding sometimes like he rebuked Peter, get behind me, Satan, when he tried to stop him from going to his death on the cross. But the difference is that whether they understood it or not fully, they stayed with him. And he fulfilled, Christ fulfilled his obligation to not lose any and not let any be plucked out. Because the Father gave them, that transaction happened, so Jesus is not allowed to lose them. He has a mandate not to lose them, okay? And because these disciples, the eleven, were given by the Father, they believed and were sure that Jesus is the Christ, in contrast to the betrayers who believe not and walk no more with him. And we might infer from that that they weren't sure that he is the Christ. They thought, oh, maybe he is, until they reached the bread and the blood teaching, and all of a sudden, maybe he isn't after all. And of course, many uh, Jews didn't believe him because he didn't meet their expectations of what a messiah should look like and antichrists would deny that he was come as we read in one John. Now the free will Freddies and Chosen Charlies argue about what the word draw means whether it's a forceful action like he's pulling believers towards himself that's Chosen Charlie's position or he's attracting people to himself which is free will Freddie's position. Well, sometimes the free will Freddies do contradict themselves a bit here because they'll say that the Father drawing them to Jesus is that he's attracting them, not forcing them. But then the Charlies use the old go back to the Greek trick that we all get a little bit suspicious of and say that the Greek word to draw is a forceful word. But then free will Freddie invokes John 12 that Jesus will draw all men to me, therefore it can't be forceful. But then to say that draw means to attract still doesn't work because it, it because clearly not all men everywhere are attracted to him, are they, free will Freddy? Now maybe he'll say, well it means bring towards him in a gospel preaching context, i.e. he draws all men towards him by preaching the gospel, but not all men will believe him. Well that would work in John 12, but it doesn't work in John 6 because as I said earlier, verse 37 compared with verse 44 and verse 65 show as parallel statements that the father drawing them to Jesus is the same thing as him giving them to Jesus and of those that the father gives they shall come unto him they can't come unto him unless the father gives them and all that the father it says all that the father gives shall come 
So if he's just inviting them to come but they don't all come back, that doesn't really work because they shall come if the Father gives them. Okay. So, you know, it doesn't say they might come, they shall come. And we already saw before these verses, in verse 34, that coming to Jesus is synonymous with believing on him. And when somebody is given by the Father, and they shall come unto him, and they believe on him, Jesus has been given them, they've been given to Jesus by the Father. He, he then has a mandate not to lose them. I should lose nothing that the Father gives me. And I should raise it up at the last day. And, and that has to happen. Jesus has to fulfil his mandate because, as I've spoken about before, he does the will of God without fail. He, he, he can't fail the will of God. Okay. And it's not just because draw is a forceful word in the Greek, because Jesus' surrounding statements don't really allow it to mean that. Regarding the use of the word draw and whether it's forceful in the Greek, I don't know how extensive this word is used in secular Greek to give you an answer. So so I'm just going to sack the Greek and trust the translators to know what they're doing and answer from the word draw in English. So the word draw at its most basic level, minuscule, is to bring towards. So draw to a conclusion, bring a puzzle or a conversation towards the end, or draw a picture at the lines and the strokes and the blobs which on their own mean nothing, but when you put them all together, they make this discernible picture or idea or concept. Or draw a comparison, bring two things together to discern the differences and the similarities. A train draws into the station. The station and the train are brought together, so it's bringing something towards or, or together. And the word doesn't automatically infer forceful or voluntary action. Drawing a sword is forceful on the sword because the sword doesn't consent. You just pull the sword into forceful action. But drawing a crowd is a voluntary action because nobody's forcing the crowd. They're, they're just invited or attracted to the, the issue that's bringing them in. So you can't infer either Chosen Charlie's or Free Will Freddy's point of view from the word of the verb draw in itself. You can only really do it from the context. John 6 doesn't say that God is forcing people to be saved, nor does it say he's compelling to be to people to be saved, just that he is bringing in the shall be believers to the Christ, with no further discourse as to how or why that's happening. Which is why I would not reason predestination or free will as the key purpose of this passage, to be perfectly honest. But it's, it's simply telling us what happens, okay? Perhaps more of, an, uh, more of an observation rather than telling us the causation, I guess. However, put a gun to my head and force me to pick a cause, I would rather apply causation to God drawing rather than me believing, because I think that that's a safer option given the statements that Jesus makes. And if he meant that God will draw those that he foresees will believe, there are better ways that Jesus could have phrased his statement if that's what he really meant. Like, for example, he could have said, those that will believe on me, my Father will draw them up to me and they shall come. That, that would have been a better way to phrase his statement if your future belief is the causality rather than the Father drawing being the causality. I think if he'd have said it that way, it would have made a lot more sense with Free Will Freddy's position. But, you know, I think... I think Jesus' choice of words give Chosen Charles the upper hand on this particular chapter. But then what about John 12? Now, it's the son doing the drawing this time, but this time it's all men. I will draw all men up to me. So what does that mean? It's an unusual passage insofar as Jesus was actually talking to Jewish Greeks, or at the very least Greeks worshipping at the feast. And they actually asked to speak to Jesus, and they approached him. And the first thing that Jesus says to them is that the time is coming for the Son of Man to be glorified and he's pointing forward to his death. And in verse 24 he uses a corn of wheat uh, to explain that his death is necessary to bring forth much fruit. And of course, in totality, in totality of scripture we understand that Jesus needs to go to his death for our salvation. Then something unusual happened in verse 27 and 28. Jesus prays to the Father briefly 
in front of these people and a voice from heaven came down and it's unclear how people perceived it but some people heard it like a thunder others thought that an angel spoke to him but it's not made very obvious what their opinion of this was or if they were all amazed by it Jesus of course explained that it happened for their sakes judgment is now come and signifying what death he should die makes that statement if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men onto me now on its own that sounds a bit cryptic because he could interpret being lifted up as his death lifted up on the cross or his resurrection lifted up from the grave or his ascension literally lifted up from the earth going to heaven so in that aspect the, the phrase itself is a little bit cryptic but the context sorts that out for you because Jesus is signifying what death he should die and he employed a similar turn of phrase in John 8 when he was speaking to a group of Jews and he said to them, if you believe not the time he, you shall die in your sins. And then he said shortly after, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know the time he. So the Jews he was speaking to, these were held responsible for the future action of crucifying him. But in the process of doing so, by, by crucifying him, by lifting him up on the cross, they would recognise that Jesus is he, the Christ, the anointed one. And in some ways, that happened. Peter in Acts 2 and 3 accused Jewish audiences of slaying the anointed one and called them to repent, and some of them did. On the other hand, some Jews, particularly the Pharisees and the rulers, persecuted the apostles and so on because they tried to stop the name of Jesus being preached, so they were vexed by him. And so we can infer from all of this that Jesus drawing all men onto him by his death has nothing to do with bringing people onto salvation or even wanting or inviting people to be saved but his death is drawing all people to see that he is the Christ irrespective of whether they believe on it or not now they might see as the Christ and believe him they might see as the Christ and hate that and want to persecute the people that keep preaching this but that's what his death draws them to see and we saw that this did happen the disciples preached Jesus in all sorts of people across Europe, Asia Minor, parts of Africa and today even in most parts of Asia people have a basic awareness about who Jesus is as a person so there are lots of people, all men that are drawn to be aware of the crucifixion of Jesus and by extension his resurrection of course but John 12 focuses on his death and that drawing all men to see that Jesus is he but his death doesn't draw all men to believe on him obviously but because his death shows all men that Jesus is the Christ, and therefore, because by and large they reject him, they will be judged accordingly. And that's why John 12 is talking about judgment later. That's sort of what happened in John 12. The Greeks that Jesus was speaking to, they heard the noise in the sky. Verse 37 tells us that they saw him do many miracles even, yet they didn't believe. And it ties in their unbelief with the prophecy from Isaiah, which I'll probably talk more about in another video one day. And Jesus explains that now is the judgment of this world. Jesus himself didn't come to judge, he came to save, but most people don't want him to save them, so the Father shall judge them at the last day. So in conclusion, the drawing in John 6 and 12 are not the same thing. One is the Father, the other is the Son. The Father draws all those that will have eternal life onto the sun and for obvious reasons that's not all people everywhere and the sun draws all men to the awareness of him as the Christ and that might not be all in an absolute 100% literal sense every single individual that ever existed if they've never heard of Jesus but obviously all in a general generalized kind of way generally speaking that's all draw means to, to bring towards the application is not the same in these two different chapters.